good to be here with you again today to our days of the week song days of the week 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 there's sunday and there's monday there's tuesday and there's wednesday there's thursday and there's friday and then there's saturday days of the week days of the week Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. Hello! Let's talk about what today is. Hi, Tank. Thanks for coming up. He wants to say hi. Hello, Tank. Today, today is one and five. Today is Wednesday, April the 15th. Yesterday was Tuesday, April the 14th. Today is Wednesday, April the 15th. Tomorrow is Thursday, April the 16th. And today is Wednesday, April the 15th. Hi, Tank. What are you doing? Are you taking a walk? Are you showing everyone your beautiful sweater? You were going to talk about our sweaters today. Oh, you found a sock and you wanted to play? Aha. Uh -huh. Come on over, buddy. I know, that looks like a toy. It looks like you want to play. You know what? I think Tank wants to play. Let me get a sock out for him. Here you go. You can use the sock. We'll use it later. You don't want the sock? He's excited about playing. Do you guys like to play? How, wiggle your fingers if you have doggies at home that like to play. <laughs> yeah, you have my meerkat. That's my meerkat. You don't get to play with meerkats. Hop on up. I'm going to get Tank a toy to play with. Let me run and get one real fast. There you go. There you go. There's your toy to play with. Did you see what I did? He really wanted to play, but I did not want him to play with my special toy, the meerkat. So instead, I gave him an alternative. I said, please be careful. This is not one for you to play with, but here's one for you. That's a good skill you guys can use if you have little brothers or sisters at home or if you have animals at home too that want to play with your toys and you're like, nope, this is for mine to play with, myself to play with right now. Here's yours. And you can give them one and look, he's happy. It's a good strategy. All right, today is Wednesday, April the 15th. Wednesday, W, W, down, up, down, up. W is for Wednesday. Woof, woof, woof. W is also for weather. W is for weather. Wah, wah, wah. And W is for why. W is for why. Can any of you guys think of another W word at home? An animal. Or something in the kitchen. Or something in your bedroom. Yeah, there's a lot of W words, huh? The first thing I thought of was whale. W is for whale. So today we're going to talk a little bit about weather and a little bit about whys. And I also want to let you know, you know what? I'm feeling a little under the weather today. And then I was thinking, why do we say under the weather? Am I really underneath a rain cloud? No. So why would I say under the weather? So I looked it up. Under the weather is an idiom. An idiom is a phrase that the meaning is different from the words because I'm not literally under the weather. But where did it come from? Many historians believe that under the weather came from when people used to travel by ship or when sailors would travel by ship. During a big storm, the sea gets very mighty with big waves and the boat rocks and rocks and rocks. And all of that rocking can make people seasick. So passengers at that time, when the weather was big and made the boat rock, passengers were sent way down underneath the surface of the boat to the bottom of the boat. And that way they couldn't feel the rocking as much in the hopes that they would get well soon. And so, um, and when they were down lower, they wouldn't notice the rocking. So people used to go under the deck that means the top part of the boat that you stand on. People would go under the deck because of the weather. So hence the term under the weather came about. I'm mostly okay. I'm just feeling a little sick to my tummy and a little snuffly. So I'm just 
going to rest a little today. And I was thought it gave me a good idea in that sometimes when I'm feeling under the weather, I like to have a little bit of warmth to cuddle with. And I thought something you guys could do today was find, I'm sure that your moms and dads or moms or dads or grandparents or nannies or anyone who's at home that helps you guys with laundry, I'm sure you have plenty of spare socks lying around. Ideally, find a sock that's not made of like um, synthetic material, like a cotton sock is good. But you can take a sock like this and we can make ourselves a rice heating pad. Um, you can get some rice and put it in a cup, usually about one cup or a cup and a half of rice. And I'm gonna stretch that sock over this cup. You guys can make this right now with me if you want. And I pour that rice in, pour, 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 pour. <laughs> and I have a little bit of rice at the bottom here, but it's not enough rice for mine. So my socks, my socks, my feet are bigger probably than yours. So my socks needed a little bit more than a, a cup and a half of rice. So I'm gonna take some more rice out of this bag. I have a big bag here. This was a rice bag that I made to practice twee knots. Wiggle your ears if you know what twee na is. Twee na is a Chinese, is a form of Chinese medical massage that we use in Chinese medicine. And we can use it to help heal the body. And so when you're practicing twee na, you often practice with a big rice pack like that. So that you can practice rolling and rolling and rolling. Rolling is like where you kind of cup your hand like this and you go rolling, 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 rolling. If you do it on your legs, you can feel it. It feels kind of good. Roll, roll, roll. Roll, roll, roll. When you're learning how to do it, you learn how to do it on rice packs. All right, so I just put two cups of rice in here. Good enough for me. And then after you put the rice in there, you take the top of the sock. You can use a sewing machine if you're a parent, with a parent um, or if you're old enough and you know how to use a sewing machine. You can sew with a needle and thread and a parent can show you. Or you can just tie a knot in the top of the sock. And now you've got yourself a rice pack. So you put it in the microwave for about, you have an adult, put it in the microwave for about 40 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, and you take it out and you can snuggle with your warm rice pack. It might be hot, so leave it, and it until it cools off a little bit. And there you go. So that's how you can make a rice pack to snuggle with these days. Rice packs are good to snuggle with if you're feeling under the weather or if you're feeling like you just want some comfort and you want to have something comfortable, you can snuggle with a rice pack. And for if any of you have any herbs at home, like um, any scented herbs like lavender, um, or if you have any um, rose, you can put that in there too, and that'll make a warm smell when it's heated up. I like it just the rice though, just the one. Well, great, we just learned about weather, under the weather, and we learned how to make a rice pack. Let's sing a song about Tell Me Why. <laughs> there it is. It goes. Tell me why the stars do shine. Tell me why the ivy twines. Tell me why the ocean's blue. Tell me why I love you. Because the stars were made to shine, because the ivy was made to twine, because the ocean was made bright blue, because you're my child, that's why I love you. Oh, I like that song. Would you like to sing it one more time? Let's sing it one more time together. You can feel free to dance to it or try to sing along or play your instruments along or just sway to it. It's a good one to sway to. It's called Tell Me Why. Tell me why the stars do shine. Tell me why the ivy twines. Tell me why the ocean's blue. Tell me why I love you. Because the stars were made to shine. Because 
Because you're my child, that's why I love you. That was a song that my grandmother used to sing to me when I was a wee little one. She would sing that song to me. Well, thinking of the question, why? And remembering this giraffe that I pulled out the other day, we were talking about giraffes and their long necks. I was thinking, why do giraffes, why do giraffes evolve to have long necks? Like why did they are the animals with the longest neck in our species? Why do they have such long necks? So I did some research here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna keep our giraffe out here so you can look at them and see. Giraffes are the tallest creature in the animal kingdom. Their necks can be up to seven feet long. That's taller than your dad's. They, just like humans, they have seven vertebrae in our necks. Do you feel the back of your neck, the bumpy, bumpy, bumpies there? Those are called vertebrae. That makes up your spinal column. Giraffes, we have seven from our occiput, right where our, the bumpies are in the back of your head here, all the way down to just about where your collarbone comes is in the front. So we have seven vertebrae in, vertebrae in our neck. Giraffes do too, except Ours are like maybe that big. Uh, each giraffe's vertebrae can be up to 10 inches long. Whoa, those are some big vertebrae to see. Um, so what are the, why do giraffes have such long necks? Well, we don't know for sure, but there are theories that we have. Theories are ideas that scientists have that they have gathered information and they believe that this is one of the reasons. One of the theories that they think that giraffes have long necks is due to natural selection. So giraffes, uh, it's kind of not a nice thing, but it's what they do in the animal kingdom. They fight, and giraffes fight in order to get a mate um, and to be able to have hunting grounds. And so they fight by beating their necks, beating each other with their long necks and their heads, and they use their skull, ouch, as like a big hard thump to thump the other giraffe. And so, if, you're, if a giraffe's neck is longer and it's thicker, they're more likely to win the fight. And if they win the fight, they're more likely to breed and produce offspring, whose necks are also stronger and longer. So, that's one theory as to why giraffe's necks are so long. Another theory is that giraffes compete for food. So, they share habitat on the African plains with lots of animals, and they snack on plants too. But lots of other animals snack on plants and foliage too. So their long neck allows them to reach up higher where, for food where others can't reach. So they're more likely to have food left. This is very important for survival because there's lots of droughts, which means it doesn't rain for many days and then the, the leaves kind of die out. Or Jake's stretching his neck. Let's everybody stretch our necks. Just like a giraffe. There we go. Um, yeah, so they stretch really and they grab the leaves up high. And you know what, they can feed off the ground, but they prefer to feed on leaves and foliage that's seven to 14 feet tall. Pretty high up there, huh? Another third theory that many biologists don't believe in, but it's still out there, is that there are warn that their long necks are a warning system in order to spot predators. Um, but they say that, many biologists say that if that were the case, then other animals would have developed longer necks too. So I don't know. Um, a giraffe's predators are lions and crocodiles, and that's it. And they can defend themselves with a powerful kick. And they have strong legs that kick, and they can also run. They can run up to 30 miles an hour, which is faster than you can run. Whew. So speaking of giraffes, now we know a little bit of some theories as why a giraffe's neck is so long. And so those are scientific biologist theories, by the way. Um, I know that last time we talked a little bit about some folk theories as to why different animals did different things. And this is a biologist theory of why the giraffe's neck is so long based on the study of science. So I thought we could make a handprint giraffe art project. I don't have paint at home that I can paint on my hand and stamp my hands down, but I had markers and so I traced my hand. So you guys can do that. You can trace your hand on a piece of paper or you can paint your hand with uh, some paint and then stamp it on the piece of paper, and that makes the giraffe's body. 
you have your thumb as the tail, and you have one, two, three, four legs. And then you can use the side of your hand here to trace or to stamp a neck. And then you use your thumb to trace or stamp a head. And there you go. And there it is. There you have a giraffe. And then the fun part that I did is that you can paint your finger and stamp, 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 stamp. Or you can actually, if you have washable markers and your parents are okay with it, you can mark on your fingers and then stamp, 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 stamp the spots on the giraffe on here. So that's an art project you guys can make today. You can make your own giraffe just with your hand and some paints or just with your hand and some markers. Hooray! All right, let's see what's next. Ah, a weather book. So because I'm feeling a little under the weather, I decided I wouldn't read you a book today, but I would show you somebody else reading a book about weather. Plus, I don't have access to the library right now. And I can't get to some of the books that I would love to show you. So I figure I'll let the internet show you the book and somebody is reading this book. Ta -da! Weather. Look up at the sky. The weather helps us know what to wear and do and go. It brings rain, wind, and sun. Let's go outside for some fun. What is weather? Peek out your window at the sky. Is it sunny or cloudy? Rainy or windy? You are checking the weather. Weather is what it's like outside at one place at one time. So keep a lookout. Weather can change fast. The sun. The sun warms the land. It warms the air and water, too. The sun's heat and light help things grow. Plants and animals need sunshine to live. Question. Why does a woman go outside with her purse open? Answer. She expected some change in the weather. <laughs> what a joke. Sunny days are fun. You can play outside. Can you go to the park or ride a bike? The sun can make the air outside hot. You can cool off with a swim. Ooh, I like swimming. White fluffy clouds are called cumulus clouds. Tiny water droplets float in the air. They group together. They make clouds of all shapes and sizes. White fluffy clouds mean good weather. Weather words, droplets, a very small bit of liquid. Here's a joke. Question. What does a cloud wear under its clothes? Answer. Thunderwear. <laughs> Thunderwear. Flat gray clouds bring rain. Flat gray clouds are called stratus clouds. Some clouds are thin and wispy. They can look like curls of hair. These clouds float high in the sky. Thin, wispy clouds are called cirrus clouds. What comes from clouds? Dip, drop, down comes the rain. Water droplets and clouds sometimes fall as rain. Rain falls in warm and cool weather. Rain helps plants and animals live. It fills rivers and ponds. Rain forms puddles and sidewalks. Clouds. Question. What did the cloud say to the lightning bolt? Answer. You are shocking. <laughs> Weather word. Scary. A light snowfall that barely covers the ground. Grr. It's cold outside. Water droplets and clouds sometimes freeze. They can fall as hail or snow. If it's hail, you'll see ice. If it's snow, you might get a flurry. Often, a lot of snow means a snow day. Question, what falls and never gets up? Answer, snow. 
lovely and tender. Lightning is a super hot stream of electricity that lights up the sky. Flash, it zips from the cloud toward the ground. After lightning comes a boom. That sound is thunder. Thunder works. Electricity, energy that can make heat and light. Rainbow. Have you ever seen a rainbow after a storm? Rainbows are made from sunlight and water droplets. Rainbows paint bright spikes of color in the sky. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Which color do you like best? Question. What bow can't be high? Answer. A rainbow. <laughs> Sixth grade weather is wild. Number one. Sometimes water flows where it is usually dry. This is called a flood. Number two. Hail is ice that rains from the sky. It can be small or it can be bigger than a baseball. Number three. A hurricane brings heavy rain and strong winds. Number four. Very strong winds sometimes twist. They form a tornado. Number five. It's hard to see in a blizzard. Number six. Sometimes it doesn't rain for a long time. This is called a drought. Weather words. Blizzard. A heavy snowstorm with wind. Wind. Wind is moving air. A light wind is called a breeze. A strong wind is called a gale. Wind has energy. It pushes clouds and rain across the sky. Wind can make kites dance. Weather and me. The weather helps you plan your day. Do you wear sunglasses or rain boots? Will you swim or throw snowballs? Wherever you go, the weather is always with you. Question. What goes up when the rain comes down? Answer. An umbrella. <laughs> What in the world? These pictures are close-up views of weather things. Use the hints to figure out what's in each picture. Answers are on page 31. You wear these in sunny weather. They fall as a flurry or as a blizzard. This goes up when rain comes down. A stream of electricity. They come in all shapes and sizes. And they fall from clouds in warm weather. about weather. <clears throat> Ta -da. So, this book talked a little bit about this, but if you have paper at home and markers or paint, and if you guys have cotton balls at home, if you don't have cotton balls, you can use clay. Uh, it's a little harder with clay, but you can do it. You can also use um, tissue paper. You can also use, I guess you could use toilet paper. It's a little hard with that. Um, cotton balls are the best. Um, and so you take these cotton balls, and one thing about cotton balls is you can stretch, stretch, stretch them, and you can make them look like different clouds. So, how many of you guys, I want to bring this closer so you can see it. Da, 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 da. Whoa, my clouds aren't glued on. <laughs> Let's see. How many of you guys remember what the white fluffy clouds that are low lane and that signal good weather are called? Yeah, cumulus clouds. Whoa. Can you guys make some cumulus clouds with your cotton balls? You can paint a piece of paper and glue them on. I didn't have glue, so I didn't glue them on. <laughs> How many of you guys remember what the clouds are called when they're thin and wispy and at a high level? I always call them feathers in the sky. They look like feathers in the sky. 
Yeah, they're cirrus clouds. Cirrus clouds usually mean fair to pleasant weather, but it also means the weather's probably going to change in about 24 hours to some form of precipitation. Precipitation is like rain or snow. And how many of you guys remember what these flat, gray, low-lying clouds. These are the high-lying clouds. Sorry if I said that wrong. These are high-lying. These are the low-lying. The flat, gray, low-lying clouds are called. Yeah, stratus clouds. And there's a form of stratus clouds called nimbulostratus, which usually means it's gonna rain. So you guys can make clouds with your cotton balls, and you can also make animals in the clouds, too. <laughs> And on top of it, if you guys have, um, if your parents let you use the internet at home, you can do some research. Or if you have a book on weather and types of clouds, you can read that to find out what are different types of clouds. Because those are just three different types we talked about. Cumulus, the puffy one. Stratus, the flat gray one. And cirrus, the high line, thin whiskey one. But there's high level clouds, middle level clouds, and low level clouds. And there's tons of different types of each. I think a good like 10 to 12, at least nine to 12 different types of clouds. You guys can look out, look it up and learn different types of clouds. And then you can predict what the weather is gonna be based upon the clouds and what they're saying. That's what's fun about weather is it can be a science. Sometimes the predictions are not the same because weather changes, but oftentimes when you can read the clouds, you can read what's probably gonna happen within the next hour at least. Great, well, we learned about clouds. We learned about giraffes and why they might have evolved to have long necks. And now, similar to that story that we just heard about the weather, let's sing a song about rainbows before we head out. Um, I call it the rainbow song. I don't remember who it's by. I would have to look this up. I learned this one in third grade, so it was a long time ago. <laughs> but it goes. Red and yellow and pink and green, purple and orange and blue. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow too. That's the first verse. Let's try that. It's, mm, do I have colors? I don't think I have the colors here, so I'll just tell it to you. Red and yellow, pink, and green. Red and yellow and pink and green. And then we go purple and orange and blue. Purple and orange and blue. And then you just say, I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow too. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow too. Let's put that together. I know this is a fact teaching, but that's okay. Red and yellow and pink and green, purple and orange and blue. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow too. And then this one's funny. It says, listen with your eyes. Ha, huh, that's an interesting thing to think about. Listen with your eyes, listen with your eyes, and sing everything you see. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing along with me. Yeah, let's try that one. It's listen with your eyes, listen with your eyes, and sing everything you see. Listen with your eyes. Listen with your eyes and sing everything you see. And then it's, I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing along with me. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing along with me. Yeah, let's put that together. Listen with your eyes, listen with your eyes and sing everything you see. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing along with me. And then we sing the first verse again. Red and yellow and pink and green, purple and blue, purple and orange and blue. I can 
can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow too. Yay, let's try it to all together one last time. Mm, yeah, I'll do it with the song. Red and yellow and pink and green, purple and orange and blue. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow too. Listen with your eyes, listen with your eyes and sing everything you see. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing along with me. Red and yellow and pink and green, purple and orange and blue. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow too. Yay! I had fun singing and learning with you today. I figured one more thing before we leave. Since I am feeling under the weather, and some of you might be feeling under the weather too, what you can do if you're feeling under the weather, using some acupuncture and tree knot principles, we can rub our own bodies and help our bodies feel better. First thing we can do, if you have glasses, it's easier to take them off. There's like your ear and the corner of your eye, right in between of your temple, and very gently, just like you were two fingers petting a starfish under the ocean, or a sea star under the ocean, or like you were two fingers touching a very gentle creature. You can rubble, 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 very gentle. Rubble, rubble your temples here. We'll count to 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty, twenty. Nice. After that, another spot. This is a good spot when you're trying to go to bed at night or trying to relax or when you're upset and you want to calm down. There's a spot called Yin Town right between your eyebrows and just a little bit up. And same thing with that two finger gentle touch. You can rub that. We'll count to 20 here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Nice. The other thing you can do is right at the back of your head, there's little bumps right here. You'll feel them almost behind your ear if you go a little bit more towards the center of your head and you'll feel the occip occiput area, the occipital groove there. Right on the side of your vertebrae there, you're gonna feel little bumpies there. You're gonna rub those, oh, it doesn't have to be as gentle. You can rub those a little bit firmer. Um, We'll count to 20 rubbing those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Nice. And about halfway between your neck here and the end of your shoulder, there's like a little area. Ooh, if you grab with your fingers, like a pinchy, 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 not too hard. Just right, not too hard, not too soft, but just right. You can rub that. One, two, up again, we're gonna count to 20. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Nice, and do the same on the other side. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Great! And then remember those lung spots? You put your arm forward like you're Superman flying or Supergirl or Superhuman flying. And it's not the armpit, it's not the collarbone up here or the clavicle. It's right in between the two. Yeah, and you'll feel like a tender spot in your lung. Just make little circles there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Same on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Nice. Shake, 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 shake. And the very last thing you can do, just like you were gonna have a bracelet around your arm, you take two fingers and you put it at your wrist, like where the crease of your wrist is, and then right where that second finger lies, you can make your make a little bracelet out of your fingers. <laughs> and you can rub your arms like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Same on the other side. Crease of your wrist, two fingers, right where that second finger is, make a bracelet with your fingers, and rub. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20. And we take three big breaths in. One more. Two breaths. Three breaths. And now our body has gotten a little bit of stimulation for our immune system to fight anything that may, might be making us feel a little under the weather. And even if not, all that rubbing feels good on the body and sometimes calms our excited bodies down. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I look forward to singing and learning with you tomorrow. Bye.